Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about the acid base balance and after that I will teach you how to read ABG in a very simple way. First, I would like to um, let you know I'm not going to explore the details of acid base balance. I am going to tell you the application of the acid base balance for reading ABG. So, I start with some fact which I'm sure you know. First is, as you know, the level of proton is the most important item for us to measure uh, pH. But it's, as you can see, it's very low, 4, 0 nano equivalent per liter, which this amount we cannot calculate and play with this number easily. That's why we use logarithm of proton, which we call it pH, as you know. For instance, I wrote this example for you to tell you with this huge number, we reach 7.4, which you know is in the normal range of pH. What was, you must remember, when we talk about the protons and pH, they are measuring one thing, but in the two different directions. That means when the proton is high, pH must be low. Low pH high proton and vice versa. The second point I wanted to remind you is definition of acidosis and alkalosis. Acidosis, that means of course we have more proton and in our body pH below 7.35 is acidosis and pH above 7.45 is alkalosis as you know. Third point is how our body regulate actually because Every day our body, you know, has to deal with many things in our life like eating, doing exercise and many more and the pro level of the proton will change and our body needs to keep the balance and keep the proton in the normal range. How our body does, there are two, three different ways, as you know, very fast, fast and a little bit slower. The first which normally it happens in few seconds is chemical component. We call it buffer system. I will talk about this a bit later. Respiratory system is the second and the, one of the most important system to regu regulate proton in a few minutes. And lastly, the kidney, which normally keep the maintenance for the longer time. And it also takes more time to regulate the level of proton. Remember, buffer system, respiratory, and the kidney. These are my main goals for the third point. Let's move for the, some other facts. After knowing that three way which our body used to regulate acid and base, now I am going to talk about each of them very briefly. The first one, as you remember, was the buffer system. The fact is the buffer is any substance that can reversibly bind with proton. As I show you here, very reversible. And later on I will talk about this more because this is the main concept of acid-base balance. Next point is bicarbonate buffer system, which I am going to talk about this right now. What is this? It's a big acid and a bicarbonate salt like a NaHCO3. As I said, the buffer system is reversible, as you can see here. H2CO3 can be proton and bicarb. Imagine this combination. If we add, we add some more acid, or body produce some more acid somehow, what will happen? Because as I said, it's reversible. More proton here combined with bicarb and produce is weak acid, which can be easily be broken to CO2 and H2. Where this CO2 is going, definitely the stimulate respiratory system to eliminate CO2. It means if we got some more proton, our respiratory system will regulate in this way to work harder and remove more CO2. And the opposite way, if we have some 
very strong base like uh, this one. Base with the weak acid definitely it produce bicarb and more proton because this make a salt and the, we have a proton and bicarb. What is happening when we use this weak acid to produce proton and bicarb with combination of these? We, our body need to produce more acid from how? From where? From CO2. That means our body use more CO2 to produce this weak acid with combination of NaOH. It produce more bicarb and regulate the system. In the simple word, more acid. If we have, then what will happen? We you, we produce more CO2 and more base. If we add to our body system. We use CO2 to regulate that uh, excess base. Before I continue and talk about respiratory and kidney, how they regulate our acid base, I remind you this is the gold standard formula about what is happening in our body for acid base regulation. Let's talk about respiratory system. Imagine our respiratory, RR means respiratory rate, is increased. We ventilate faster. As a result, our body is losing more CO2. That means the CO2 concentration will decrease. Imagine CO2 is dropping. What will happen? That means this formula will move to this direction to produce more CO2 to concentrate in the simple way. As a result, you are losing more acid, or basically proton. What will happen? The pH will increase, we call it alkalosis. Later on, you will learn, we call respiratory alkalosis. And opposite, if our respiratory rate drops, like using morphine and many other things, what will happen? We ventilate slowly and the concentration of the CO2 in our blood will increase. When we have more CO2, direction will be in this way. As a result, we have more, more proton and our pH is, will be dropped. What is the result? Acidosis. What type of acidosis do you think it will be? Exactly, respiratory acidosis because the origin is respiratory system. What about kidney? For the kidney, just I would like to remind you there are three ways how kidney regulate ECF proton concentration, extracellular fluid proton concentration. There are three different ways. First, secretion of proton. Second, reabsorption of the filter by car. Most of them, as you can see, have the same meaning losing more proton or reabsorbing more by cap. As a result, control the balance. And in some situation, production of the new by cap, which I'm not going to go to detail of this. If you ask me in the future, I can uh, teach you about the physiology of the kidney, how this is happening on the kidney. But as a fact, you must know this. And very important, fact is this, for each bicarb reabsorption, always one proton must be secreted. We don't have, never, never have an imbalance between these two, one by one. If we are reabsorbing one bicarb, definitely our body losing one proton. And two bicarb, two proton. That's always going to be a rule for you. Please remember this one. Next, go for the, let's go for the next step. Okay, for the point nine, before I explain, I refer you again to this formula. And as you will see, I use this to explain this simple graph. As I said, respiratory system and kidney are two major systems to regulate our acid base. And I wrote here for you the normal range of the pH proton, PCO2, and bicarb, which technically in the clinic normally we use 
these three. I will give you some example later on. Respiratory acidosis. Definition is there. Acidosis. What does it mean? That means the pH is low. Doesn't matter. As you can see, acidosis here, pH low. Acidosis here, pH low. Respiratory or metabolic, doesn't matter. Of course, when you know pH is low, proton is high. Do not memorize this. Just understand what's going on. Okay, respiratory acidosis, pH of course is low. It means the proton is high. It's the problem is respiratory system. We have acidosis, we have more proton. Where this proton comes from? More CO2, because if we have more CO2, we will have more proton. This is what I told you, that's why this is important. We have more CO2 in our respiratory system, as of course in the blood finally, and it causes respiratory acidosis. Bicarb, why bicarb is high? As I said, more CO2, you can see the product is proton and also bicarb. This is later on I will tell you, this is compensation which I, I will describe. The physiology is more complicated than this. However, as I said, I want to give you only the main concept. Respiratory alkalosis is very opposite of this. That means pH is high. Definitely PCO2 is very low. And by as well. Why? Because we are losing CO2. When I ventilate fast, that means I am ventilated more. That means I'm losing more CO2. What will happen? The direction will be in this way to keep the balance. As a result, less CO2, more pH. We call it alkalosis. Same for metabolic. Here, but the problem is kidney. When we say metabolic acidosis, of course, pH is low. Why pH is low? Because our body is losing by carb. When you are losing by carb, definitely this needs to be compensated. The direction of this formula will be in this uh, way and as a result we have metabolic acidosis. Why? Because we are losing more by car. And metabolic alkalosis of course pH is high. Why? Because we have more by car. In a simple way. Let me make it very easy. When we have acidosis or alkalosis there are four options. Acidosis respiratory or metabolic. Respiratory, that means the problem is respiratory system, which is high CO2 level. Metabolic acidosis, that means we are losing by cap. Just think about it, as I said, one proton, one by cap. Metabolic acidosis, that means kidney, because it regulates the uh, by cap. Losing more bicarb, as a result, we have acidosis. And vice versa for alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis, that means I'm losing more CO2. My pH is increasing. And metabolic alkalosis, that means the kidney cannot uh, control the level of the bicarb. And I have, or something happened in my body, I have more bicarb. As a result, what will happen? I have metabolic alkalosis. It's very, very easy, simple, as I said. Do not confuse yourself with this arrow, up, down, up, down. Just remember this fact. Respiratory CO2, kidney, bicarb. This is the major fact. High CO2, of course, acidosis, what type? Respiratory. High bicarb, just when you see the bicarb, you must choose kidney. Metabolic, what? High bicarb, alkalosis. When bicarb is low, metabolic, oh, acidosis, because the level of the bicarb is low. Let's move, and I give you some example by using these facts, how you can read easily ABG. Next step. After this very fast review of some facts about acid-base balance, now I would like to teach you how to read ABG 
very fast and easy. Each, normally you need this one in the clinic. Those physiological pattern, maybe, but uh, for understanding, but practically you need this. I wrote here the normal range of the pH, which you need to memorize that one, and there is no way to uh, give this normal range in every single case. You must remember this normal range. And how we read this one, let me give you this example. Okay? For, for a while, ignore this. This is the case, pH 7.45, you took the uh, blood gas and you tested, pH 7.45, by cap 28 and PSU 247. Please, when you want to read ABG, do a step by a step. Do not confuse with number. First, second, third, and lastly, you interpret. pH 7.45, normal range. I wrote normal. By cap 28, don't look at this, only by cap. What is my cap? 28, more than normal. When we have more than normal, first by cap. When you see the by cap, you will write metabolic. Metabolic. Here, by cap is higher. It definitely, it's not acidosis, it's alkalosis. Metabolic, alkalosis. And lastly, PSU2, 47. It's still higher than normal. When is CO2, you write respiratory, beta Respiratory what? CO2 is higher. When, as I said, CO2 is higher, it will be acidosis. Respiratory, acidosis. Now, interpretation. This is normal. That means what happened here or here, we call it fully compensated because we don't have pH problem in this case. But when you look at every single of these, you will see there is problem. But why? Because one of them was major problem, another one was compensation. In this case, we said it's fully compensated. But which one is the main problem, which one is compensation? Think for a second. Metabolic alkalosis was the main problem, primary problem, and respiratory acidosis is compensation or opposite. Very simple way, look at the pH. It's 7.45, it's close to the higher normal. That means definitely it was something like maybe 7.5, and it compensated and come back to the normal. Our body, remember, never overcompensate. Because it's close to 7.45, definitely it was metabolic acid alkalosis, which compensated by respiratory acidosis. Next example. This example, I didn't write the result. You are going to interpret. I give you a few seconds. Tell me, I do pause. pH 7.36. Normal. Great. By cap 21. Low. By cap. Metabolic acidosis. Good. Metabolic acidosis. PSCO2, as I said, PSCO2 immediately. Respiratory what? Below. Respiratory alkalosis, because CO2 is low. Again, normal, problem, and problem. Which one is the primary, which one is compensation? This time you can tell me. What is that? Perfect. It's close to the 7.35. That means the main problem was acidosis, which is metabolic, compensated by respiratory alkalosis, and fully compensated or completely compensated. Next example. In this example, <coughs> look at that. Tell me, 7.53. 
Yes, abnormal. What type of abnormal? Here we have alkalosis. By cap, 28, as I said, immediately metabolic. What? More than normal. Again, alkalosis. And PSU2, as I said, respiratory. Respiratory, what? Below normal. Below normal respiratory, alkalosis again. See? First is abnormal. Second, both of them. This is the example of mixed alkalosis. As you can see, bicarb is increased and PCO2 is decreased. Remember, very simple way. I will give you some more example later. When bicarb and PCO2 are moving in the different direction, one of them is increasing. Another one is decreasing. Nearly always you have a mix. Could be mixed acidosis or mixed alkalosis. In this case, it's mixed alkalosis. If bicarb is decreasing and PCO2 is increasing, it's just mixed acidosis. And many other examples. Not 100%, but most of the time, remember, this formula helps you immediately catch mixed type of acidosis or alkalosis like I did here. Next example. This example, tell me, 7.28 grape is acidosis. Perfect. By cap, again, metabolic what? Metabolic acidosis because it's below normal. And PSU2, as I said again, immediately. Respiratory, respiratory what? Below normal. PCO2 below normal is always alkalosis. Okay, now you tell me, patient has acidosis, what is the main problem? Of course, is metabolic acidosis. What happened to the respiratory system? Respiratory system worked hard to compensate, but it still didn't compensate. We have compensation, why? Because you can see the CO2 is dropped, but it's not fully compensated. It a still patient has acidosis. Next. Next case, pH 7.5, by cap 24, PSO2 27. What is this? Of course, alkalosis. Great. By cap, as I said, by cap is metabolic what? Normal, no problem. 27, below normal, respiratory alkalosis. What is the problem here? Alkalosis, alkalosis, normal. Of course, is respiratory alkalosis compensated? Not at all. It's not compensated because the pH is still is high. Patient has respiratory alkalosis without compensation. Next, as I gave you, pH 7.28, I cap 20, and pH 46. What is this? Great. Acidosis. By cap 20. M metabolic. Acidosis again, because the bicarb is low. As I said, bicarb and CO2, just play with these two. PSCO2, 46, a little bit higher, but still respiratory acidosis. What's the patient problem? Mixed acidosis, metabolic and respiratory together. Do you remember I told you previous example? I told you when they are moving in the different direction, you have a mix. Bicarb is decreased and PCO2 is increased. Opposite direction. Definitely it is a mixed type of acidosis because 
Next example, I give you something with compensation. You will see for compensation, they move in the same direction. Let me, without example, I give you some explanation. Imagine you have metabolic acidosis. What does it mean? Bicarb is low. Metabolic acidosis, how the respiratory system will compensate? You have acidosis. Would you like to keep more CO2 or you would like to ventilate more and remove more CO2 to balance it? Yes, we hyperventilate to reduce the level of the CO2 to compensate with that. That means bicarb is low, CO2 will decrease, all, both of them going in the same direction because it's compensating. And opposite, give you another. Your bicarb is high, like uh, bicarb is 29. What type of problem with the, of course, metabolic alkalosis? Now I have metabolic alkalosis. My respiratory system would like to ventilate more to lose CO2, which is equal to acid or not. Hypoventilate and keep more CO2. To have more acid to keep balance between high bicarb and high acids. Of course, hypoventilate. That means the CO2 will increase as well. Bicarb is increased CO2. When they are going in the same direction, remember that one of these systems is compensating. If they are moving like this example in the opposite direction, it must be a mixed type of acid base imbalance. Next. Going to be the last example before I move to uh, another chapter. pH 7.38. What is that? Good, normal. By cap 29. High. High by cap, metabolic, great. Alkalosis. And PSU2, respiratory acidosis. Perfect. Okay. Now, as you can see, look at here. High, high. They are moving in the same direction. This is not going to be a mixed type of acid base imbalance. Which one is the main problem? Do you remember the fact I told you? Which one is compensation? Which one is primary problem? Look at your pH. Your pH is close to lower level. That means definitely it was acidosis and compensated by alkalosis. So, main problem was respiratory acidosis compensated fully or partially. Normal, fully compensated by a kidney or metabolic alkalosis. Very simple. Again, go step by step. I summarize. Check the pH. Three options. Normal. Acidosis or alkalosis. Then look at bicarb. Normal. High or low? Normal, of course, normal. When it's high, high level of bicarb. Bicarb is base. That means you have metabolic alkalosis. Low level of bicarb, metabolic acidosis, simple like that. And CO2, normal, high, low. If it's normal, oh, great. If it's high, respiratory, acidosis. If it's low, respiratory, alkalosis. You have to read one by one. And finally, your final decision based on this, like in this case, you said patient is normal. Which one is primary? This must be why, because it's normal, close to the lower level. It definitely was even less than this, and compensated by high level of bicarb, and reached to the normal. Primary problem, compensated by this, fully compensated. There is one more thing I would like to share with you, which is onion gap after this. The last part, I would like to talk about the onion gap few words first. I didn't 
quite hear anything about that, but you must remember we use anion cap to differentiate different type of metabolic acidosis. Remember, anion gap comes with metabolic acidosis. Anion gap helps us to differentiate what is the reason of metabolic acidosis. Let me first help you to understand what is anion gap, anion gap. We, we talk about this a lot. Anion gap is the difference between cations and anion. Why? Because our body, we cannot have more anion or more cation. In our body, there is always balance between level of anion and cation in normal physiology. Anion and cation. Okay, if we have same level, what does it mean? Gap. It, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense if you look at this graph. The major cation we have is our sodium and potassium. Of course, potassium is a little bit. 4 instead of 130 something for sodium. Sodium is major. In some formula, even they don't write potassium. If you write without potassium, also is correct. And anion we have is chloride and bicap. However, is not the only anion we have. We have some type of other anions, I wrote here other, which we cannot measure it. And this is the anion gap. Why? Because here we cannot measure. As you can see, we have two same boxes because I told you anion and cation are the same level. The anion gap is these amounts of anion which we cannot measure it. And it's very easy to calculate because we can measure sodium, we can measure potassium, we can measure chloride, we can measure bicarb, we cannot measure this minus this will be anion gap. Simple like that. Now how we use anion gap? You have to know the normal range is something between 10 to 8, 16. This range maybe uh, will change based on putting potassium or not. But it's still something between 10 to 16. In which situation anion gap will increase? Very simple. When we have some imbalance between these two. Like ingestion of the acid, I give you one example, like a salicylate. Salicylate, when people ingest more salicylate, they will develop metabolic acidosis for sure, because it's acidosis, but the anion gap will increase, because there are some things which increase this level. Body production of acid will increase, like people, they have diabetes. In some situation, when they got the ketoacidosis, that means their body produce more acid, which is still that type of acid, is not chloride, is not bicarb, the anion is something else we cannot measure, the gap will increase, it still is high anion gap of metabolic acidosis. And finally, there are a few examples, inability to excrete acids, simple. Input is high, the factory body producing more, or problem is we cannot remove the waste material. That means there is excretion problem. What is the excretion part of body? Kidney, renal failure. Remember, do not confuse yourself. Renal failure, of course, metabolic acidosis. High anion gap, for sure high anion gap. Why? Because it cannot excrete acid. And Normal, when we lose maybe ions, anion or cation, but in the same level. Imagine patient has diarrhea. Whatever acid they are losing, they're using the same amount of bicarb. Maybe they develop, definitely they develop metabolic acidosis in some type of diarrhea. But what will happen? Nothing will change here. And or renal tubular acidosis, which is a little bit uh, uh, more complicated is not complicated, need to be explained more, but uh, if I teach you the kidney in the future, I will talk about renal tubular acidosis and the different type of renal tubular acidosis, you will learn more. Right now, my main concern is you understand what is anion gap, simple like this, and in which situation anion gap will increase. Of course, metabolic acidosis, ingestion, 
more production or problem for removing the overproduction or normal production, which is inability to excrete the acid. Simple like that. That's why we have accumulation of the type of acid we cannot measure of level of anion. This will increase. We call it metabolic acidosis with high anion gap. Thank you so much. See you for the next lecture.